Hello everyone, History with Hilbert here, and welcome back to Top 10 Anime Betrayals Korean Edition. Hello everyone, welcome back, and today I'm going to be talking about why is North Korea a communist country? As you will know, the Korean country is split in half with one government in the north and another government in the south. Now we call these two governments North Korea and South Korea, one of which is a very strictly and censored communist government in the north and the other which is a very liberal capitalist society in the south. How did this come to be? It's also interesting that this wasn't the situation forever and this is a very new situation that's only been going on for about 70 years. Korea was a united country and for much of its history it was a united entity with a Korean empire being established in the early 20th century. However this was to be very short-lived as in 1910 the Japanese annexed Korea becoming a part of a rapidly expanding Japanese empire that would grant them much of Asia and which which would bring them into the Second World War after their bombing the Americans at Pearl Harbor. Many Koreans were deeply dissatisfied with the Japanese occupation, and on the 1st of March 1919 a mass protest was held throughout the country, after which there were months and months of reprisals in which thousands of Koreans lost their lives. Following Japan's annexation, a government in exile was set up in neighboring China, called the Provisional Government of Korea. Various resistance movements joined together to create the Korean Liberation Army, which saw combat throughout the Pacific fighting alongside Chinese, Soviet, American and Commonwealth forces in India, Burma and China. As the tide was turning in the Pacific towards the Allies' favour, the Korean Liberation Army set their sights on liberating the homeland once again. However, they were beaten to it by the atomic bombs, which were dropped on Japan on the 6th and the 9th of August, followed by Japan's capitulation on the 15th. The first Allied troops to enter Korea were the Soviets, who finally entered the war in the Pacific on the 9th of August, first entering the northeastern Chinese region of Manchuria, which had been occupied by the Japanese. Before the war, communism hadn't been too popular in the north or in any part of Korea for that matter, and actually when the Soviets were trying to set up a Soviet communist style government in the north, they often recruited help from ethnic Koreans who were living in the USSR at the time, called the Koryu Saram. In the limbo period between the Soviet advance and the Japanese surrender, many Soviet style committees were formed under the Committee for the Preparation for of Korean Independence. On the 28th of August, the People's Republic of Korea was declared in Seoul. As the Soviets swept southwards into Korea, they were welcomed as liberators. However, the Americans were very alarmed by the rate of expansion, and they certainly didn't want another communist state after most of Eastern Europe had already been claimed for the Red Army. The United States Army sent two young generals to land in Korea, who agreed with Soviets to split the country in half along the 38th parallel, as it split the country roughly in half, but more importantly left the capital under American control. The northern half of the country would be left under Soviet control until a time when they could agree upon which part would belong to whom and they would give the country back to the Koreans. The Soviets worked with the committee set up by the Republic of Korea, however the Americans completely disregarded it and replaced it with their own military government upon arrival in the peninsula. So I need to talk a little bit about Kim Il-sung because he is very important for the story of communism in Korea and especially North Korea. Now, Kim Il-sung was born to a poor family in Korea in 1912. He was involved in a lot of anti-Japanese movements and because of this he fled to China in 1931 where he fought with Chinese guerrillas against the Japanese. He was hunted down during the war but he always managed to evade capture, although at one point he did have to escape with his men over the Amur River into the USSR. He was there retrained as a Red Army Major and his regiment was one of the first to enter Korea and he entered Korea in September after being away for almost 26 years. Once he was in Korea, he was put in charge of the Provisional People's Committee for North Korea, which was the bedrock of what would become the Communist Party in North Korea. Meanwhile, there were clashes throughout the peninsula between the far left and the far right. The USSR and the USA did their best to keep them from fighting each other, although the USSR obviously favoured the more communist parties and the USSR obviously favoured the more right-wing, anti-communist, pro-capitalist parties and many atrocities were committed to different groups during this time. In November 1947, the UN had had more than enough and they declared that elections would have to be held. Now, the US happily complied. However, the Soviets, were they really going to go with a free election? No. 
In the southern United States controlled part of Korea, they voted on the 15th of August 1948 and the Republic of Korea was born. Under a month later, on the 5th of September, the undemocratically chosen Democratic People's Republic of Korea was declared with Kim Il-sung at the helm and the rest we all know because they're still divided to this day. Alright everyone, so thank you very much for watching. This has been my video about why North Korea is communist because I think most people will know the story about the Korean War even though it's called the Forgotten War because it's not really remembered as much, um, which is what forgotten means. But I wanted to give a little bit of background about how communism got there in the first place and I might make a few more of these at some point. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'm History with Hilbert. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and tune in again next time. Bye.